Hi everyone. So thanks for tuning in. And right now I'm going to try to go over our notes for protein synthesis, which sometimes this whole process of how DNA codes for our proteins to give us our traits is referred to as the central dogma. So it's just another term you might hear. So on your notes, you can fill in, I'm gonna kind of explain what this whole setup here means, and I'm gonna fill in some of the blanks down here so you can fill that in as we go. So let me try to zoom in here. We'll just start with DNA. Hopefully my doc cam is just literally like set up on a big thing of books. Hopefully it doesn't fall. Okay, so if we start with DNA, which we've already talked about a little bit, and we know a little bit about the structure of DNA, so we know a couple things so far. We know that it's double-stranded, so that's what these two strands here represent, and we know that it's made up of a chain of nucleotides. Both strands are a chain of nucleotides, which are bonded in the middle based on the nitrogen bases, so we know that A pairs with T and C pairs with G. So if we're discussing our language, that's what I'm gonna write for language, those four bases, A, T, C and G. Adenine, thionine, cytosine, guanine. For now, you can just know the abbreviations. And so what is the purpose of DNA? Again, this is a little bit of a review, but the purpose of DNA is that it's basically a code for, you know, it's our entire code that then is able to make proteins which give us our traits to make us who we are. So I'm gonna write for purpose, I'm gonna write contains the original code for making proteins. Contains the original code for making proteins. And your code is different from everyone else in the world. It makes you unique. You might have similarities to your family because you are getting part of your DNA passed down to you from your parents, but your actual DNA will be a unique code, very unique set for you. So, moving on to something new that we haven't talked about yet. Let me just hope that the doc cam is still holding up there. So it's called RNA, and there's actually different types of RNA. The one we're gonna focus on for this process is, there's normally we put a little M in front, it's called messenger RNA. But we'll just, I'm just gonna call it RNA for this lecture. Um, but a couple differences that are really important to highlight between DNA and RNA before I start talking about what is the purpose of RNA. RNA is single-stranded, so it's gonna look very similar to DNA, but you're only gonna have one strand of nucleotides. And the nitrogen bases all remain the same with one exception. U stands for uracil, and there's no thymine in RNA. So while you'll see T's in DNA, you're going to only see U's for uracil in RNA strands. And as I mentioned, it's also single-stranded. One other difference that's not really on this paper but that is important to know is that RNA is a lot smaller than DNA. So in the human genome, you probably have about 3 billion nucleotides in your entire set of DNA for each human. But a set of RNA, messenger RNA, is only going to be about 500 to 1,000 of these letters in a row. It's going to be a lot shorter. And the reason for that is that it's called messenger RNA because it's taking the DNA and it's sort of like a middleman before we get to make the protein. So it's transferring the code from the DNA, our original code, and it's bringing it outside of the nucleus. So DNA can't leave the nucleus part of the cell, but RNA can. RNA can bring it to another part of the cell called the ribosome, where we can then turn it into proteins, which I'll talk about on the next little section. So let's fill in what we know about RNA. The language is gonna be similar to DNA, but instead of the T, you're gonna substitute a U. So everything else remains the same. And the purpose is that it's a middleman, it's sort of like the messenger that converts DNA to protein. So we can put messenger that converts DNA to protein. Okay, here we go. Great. So up next, I want to just while I'm on this slide about, oops, about RNA, I want to talk about 
these things called codons. So here's what's happening when messenger RNA is, con is turning, is taking the code from DNA and turning it into proteins. We have to basically read that message. It, it's a chain of about 500 to 1,000 nucleotides in a row, and it's a message. It's a message for what type of protein we're turning it into. So the way that the ribosome is able to read that messenger RNA is through something called a codon. It's basically a set of three nucleotides in a row. So we would break up the nucleotides one, two, three, space, one, two, three, space, one, two, three. And each set of three letters codes for something called an amino acid. And I'm going to show you on a different video how to determine what those three letters, like how do I know which amino acid AUG stands for? It's basically like a word, right? It has meaning. So in order to figure out what the meaning of AUG is, we need a separate chart that again, I'll show you on a different video. How do I figure out what AUG stands for? So over here, I'm just gonna fold this paper so it fits on my screen. Over here we can see that using something called a codon chart, I was able to figure out that AUG stands for an amino acid called methionine, abbreviated MET for short. If I flip back over, I can see the next set of three letters was AUC. And again, using this codon chart, which I'll go over in a different video, AUC stands for, or codes for, an amino acid called isoleucine, abbreviated ILE. And then lastly, the last set of three in this example, UCG, if we use the codon chart, we will find that UCG stands for an amino acid called serine. Okay, so what we've done so far is we started with a double strand of DNA. And something that I forgot to mention earlier that I'm gonna go over right now is how did we get this RNA based off of the DNA? Here's what we did. We took half of the DNA, so I'm gonna cover up one half, and here's what we're left with. One strand is, you know, the code that we're gonna use to get this RNA. TAC, TAG, AGC. And we're gonna use something called the base pairing rules for DNA to RNA. So anytime you have a T, it's just like with DNA, it's gonna be an A. But the difference is that since there's no T, there's no thymine in RNA, it's gonna be uracil. So anytime you have an A, you're gonna get a U when you're turning it into, uh, or making, not turning it into, but making a new strand of RNA. Anytime you have a C, this, the rules stay the same. So I'll post these rules in another document, but basically everything stays the same, except for when you have an A in the DNA, when you make the new RNA, it becomes a U instead of a T. So that's how we got this RNA and then we chunked it into three sets and we're back to our amino acids. Okay, so now we've taken that code, that RNA, and we've turned it into a chain of something called amino acids. So amino acids are going to be our language for protein. Amino acids. And we have a big string of amino acids and together, a bunch of amino acids strung together equals a protein. And you know, again, we've talked about proteins before, so we already know some of the purposes or the functions of proteins, but I'll just list a few here. So we know that proteins can help us, whoops, build our cells and tissues. So they're needed for you know, growth purposes in that sense. They also help us fight disease. Help us fight disease. And one more I'm gonna squeeze in here is just a general statement. They allow us to live. We really can't live without the, the proteins. They're doing so many different functions for us in our bodies every day as we speak. So allow us to live. All right, cool. So lastly, we've got traits. Traits are what make us unique. So typically speaking, we have physical traits, you know, kind of things related to your appearance, like your hair color. And then you have behavioral traits, maybe something like an aggressive personality or like a more timid personality. It would be more behavioral type traits. So the language of traits are proteins. Proteins tell us what your traits are gonna be. They're what kind of influence those two types of traits that I talked about up here. 
and the purpose of traits are to make you unique. Okay, so I think that's about it for the first part of the notes. I'm going to do a separate video to talk about codon chart and then the second part of the notes.